Hello, everybody, and welcome to another special episode of The Council. I'm Yusuf, and today um, it is day three of our, what did I call it? The Review Bonanza Week thing. Um, on Monday, we reviewed Jason Blum's Freaky. That's the horror movie. It's freaky. Woo. <laughs> Yesterday, we reviewed on here, right here on YouTube, we reviewed Hillbilly Elegy, and wherever you podcast your podcast, we were released our podcast uh we talked about disney investors call a snyder cut and we played a game of jeopardy that was a blast uh tomorrow we're reviewing fat man and i'm so freaking excited you don't even know i really hope the movie's good it I, it has to be good it has to be good so that's going to be tomorrow and then friday saturday and sunday we're releasing the three segments from our podcast in video form if you if podcasting ain't your thing uh if you want to digest it little by little if you want to see our faces you know whatever it may be it's coming out friday will be disney investors call so that full segment on saturday it'll be the snyder cut and on sunday sunday fun day it's going to be jeopardy woo but today we're going to be reviewing we me this one uh, I'm going to be reviewing Ammonite. Uh, this is the awards hopeful uh, from writer-director Francis Lee. It stars Kate Winslet and Saoirse Ronan um, and is now playing in select theaters and will debut on PVOD on December 4th. Now, I remember when this movie, I don't know if it was when it was first announced, but certainly when that first, remember that first picture that they released of Kate Winslet and Saoirse Ronan on the beach? And everybody on film Twitter kind of lost their minds and was like, oh my god, this is going to be amazing. It's going to sweep every award. It's going to win. It's a lesbian romance. Oh, wow. It kind of fizzled after that, man. Like, I'm going to be honest. This movie just fizzled so quickly. And I, I feel like part of it is because of its week debut at TIFF. And they just the Canadian distributor of the film was like, we don't want people to see it. They, it, they didn't make it available you know for people to watch it so it couldn't have won people's choice award because not a lot of people saw it anyways uh the reviews are mediocre it only has like a 69 percent of rotten tomatoes so it just it, it 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 fizzled really quickly and quite frankly now having seen the film i'm not surprised um i think the film although kate winslet and saoirse ronan have incredible chemistry no doubt about that um the movie is just boring I'm sorry, and like, it's not that it's slow because there were a lot of. Sl I mean, Nomadland was really slow, but I that movie was incredible. This movie is slow. It's unemotional. It's just black, like it's gray. You know, the tone doesn't really d doesn't really work, and I think it it it, it can't decide if it just you know wants to end or kind of carry on. I mean, this this movie just it, it it it's so disappointing because it could have been so good, you know. It had so much potential. It really could have sweeped with you know, the the two stars that they had, um, but I think it just it didn't materialize. You know, there's not a moment I can point to in the film and say that was incredible. You know, it has, and I know I know for a fact that there's gonna be some you know snobs who are like. It's art, it's a beautiful romance, and there, you know, you find beauty in the nonverbal moments, and blah, and it's like, yes, but again, when you're making a movie, it's a business, but also on top of that, you have, like, sure, you can find the beauty in the nonverbal moments, and, like, it's a beautiful love story and whatever, but you have to make it engaging so that your audience actually watches and gets that point. Like, I watched this movie, there were two other people in the theater, and the person in front of me was asleep, and the person behind me was on their phone. So, n nobody in that auditorium was invested. Nobody was interested in what was going to happen to these characters. I can't even tell you the characters' names, to be honest with you. I don't know. Um, it just, it, it didn't do anything to keep you invested. Um, I also, I, I also think the performances from Sir Sharon and Kate Winslet, I mean, they were good. They had incredible chemistry, like incredible chemistry, but I think we've seen both of them do much better work. And quite frankly, this movie is just like five years too late. You know, like I've, we've told this story before of, of, you know, forbidden lovers, oh, they're, you know, different classes and it's a period piece and, you know, oh, they have to keep it a secret and they have a husband and they don't want to do this and they don't want to change, you know, their life. And it's like, so, it's just, again, it's so 
late we've seen this type of film before we've seen it do better i kind of wish that now we're kind of stuck in this lull where we are getting more representation but it's kind of all the same and it's like we want to move forward and not keep it in the same like i this is it's it's just it's way too late it i think it counted too much on it being a lesbian romance to kind of like make that its big selling point but there's been so many of those types of films recently like even at the oscars with lgbtq romances so i just i don't think that was enough to kind of like make this film you know special quite frankly um francis lee he did okay i mean the writing again it was fine it's very generic it's very formulaic in the way that it tells its story the film is beautifully shot i will give it that but i think the gray color palette especially when you look at the poster just doesn't i mean it kind of works but it just it needed a little bit more of something of anything to make it you know kind of click um but yeah, it's just kind of, it's just average. And it's so disappointing because it could have been so, like this had the potential to be this year's kind of like Moonlight, if, if you want to say that. But it just, it does nothing with its premise. It does nothing with its actors. It does nothing with its script. It does nothing with its costumes. Nothing with the shots. Like they're beautiful shots, but they're shots we've seen before. They do nothing with that. Um, <laughs> and um looking through the the rotten tomatoes reviews i really like this sean edwards from fox 4 kansas city says this is a, as about as exciting as collecting fossils and it really really is it just needed that burst of energy to make it something and there again there's been there are so many slow movies that materialize but this one just didn't and i think it doesn't understand why but i can tell you it's because it does nothing and um, it's not unwatchable by any means, but it's just, just it's just too late, you know. Um, so yeah, that's my review of Ammonite. It's kind of disappointing. Do you need to see it? Not really. If you want to see it, it is playing in select theaters now and will be available on PVOD November fourth or December fourth. Sorry, but there's no point. I mean, unless unless this like just gets every single nomination which i don't see i see maybe the only thing it could get maybe kate winslet and maybe uh um a cinematography maybe a costume but other than that i really don't see like i don't see best picture i don't see best director i don't see best supporting actress for Sersha. i just don't see any of that um yeah and it, it just it wasn't poetic it was just kind of there you know what i mean um so yeah that is my review of ammonite thank you guys so much for watching like commenting subscribing subscribe to this channel um for more reviews like this and more of uh video segments of our podcast be sure to check out our podcast it's called the council um where myself and uh my fellow film fanatics you know there's a lot of us review movies um and talk about movie news and stuff it's available tuesdays at 9 a.m pacific standard time wherever you podcast your podcast check that out um leave a like yeah cool see ya goodbye oh hey thanks for watching and remember full episodes are available wherever you get your podcasts with new episodes tuesday at 9 a.m pacific standard time links in the description box and be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to stay caught up to date with the council Boys, I'm excited.